How's it going, everyone? Uh, today's episode, uh, episode three of the Make a 2D Platformer with Love 2D uh, tutorial series. Um, today, we're going to add some collision um, in our game. And so, from last episode, all we have is our falling character. Um, can't really do much other than move him this side to side. But today, we are going to be focusing on um, trying to get him to interact with some uh, something like a ground or something like that. So, uh, open up your workstation, open up the code that we've worked on since last episode. Uh, you will need one dependency. Um, I don't have it currently in my project directory, but I will get it in a second. It's called bump. Um, bump is a two is a um, it's it's a two dimensional collision library specifically targeted towards axis aligned rectangles um, or also axis aligned bounding boxes, and so that means that they don't rotate. Um, it's only dealing with rectangles, so it, it's very simple and it's it's relatively easy to use. Um, compared to other uh, collision libraries, which is why I enjoy using it. So I'll leave in a, a link in the description below as to where you can get the file, but basically all you need is this um, bump.lua file, and then inside your um, inside your uh, your main.lua, you're going to require uh, bump, and then set it to the variable bump. Um, Basically, at the end of this bump Lua file, it returns this table called bump, and so Lua gives the ability to assign variables um, to files you require if they have if they return something at the end. So that's what we're doing there. Um, next thing you're gonna need is a world. Um, basically, um, you you create it with the bump .new world function, but um, a world world is basically this table containing all of our data on uh, collision objects, stuff that we're colliding with, um, and all the stuff we add to the world will be um, updated with collision calculations. And so now that we have our world, we are going to add uh, the player to the world. And this can be done doing world colon add. Actually, you know what, let's do this in the love.load function. Uh, it makes it a little bit cleaner. So world colon add. And then it has, um, I believe, five arguments. It has, it takes in a table, um, the initial x position, the initial y position, um, the width and height of what you're trying to add. So for our case, it would be player, um, player dot x, player dot y, player dot width, uh, and player dot height. Uh, and so now we have it added into the world. We actually need um, to use another function in order to update it, because currently uh, all we have is we just added it to the world, but we're not actually doing anything with it yet. We're not comparing it to other um, collision objects. Um, even though we don't have any collision objects, uh, we still require uh, this update, this new update code. So in order to do that, um, let's create another non-existing function we, we haven't written yet. Um, I'll call this player dot collide, uh, and it'll take in dt. And uh, let's let's create this right here. So function player dot collide and the argument of dt. This will be where we're dealing with um, uh, using our bump library for collision. So uh, let's uh, okay. So there, there's there's uh, a couple things you're gonna need, but the first two things you're definitely gonna need are it will be the fr the the future x position and the future y position of our player. How do we get those? Well, God yes, um, it's going to be player dot x plus player dot uh, x velocity times dt for the future x position, and the future y position will be player dot y plus player dot y velocity times dt. And these are essentially the future positions of the player. Um, notice how we're not, um, how we are not uh, 
setting this to player.x. We're not we're not setting this expression to player.x. We're setting it to another variable called featurex that we will be inputting into um, a bump function. Uh, and if you don't know what the local keyword is, I've kind of been abstaining from using it this whole series, but um, I guess I'll start using it right now. Local basically just means that it's limited. The the variable you instant you you create with the local keyword, it will be only limited to the uh, scope in which you declare it in. So, for example, um, this local keyword, I can only use it inside this player dot collide function. If I had like an if statement, um, and inside that if statement, I had something like local foo equals foo, uh, then I can't access like this this um, that foo variable outside that if statement. So this would return an error. Um, little tidbit: it's 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 kind of like private variables in Java. Um, so now that we have our future x and future y. Um, we're going to get the next x position, next y position um, using a bump function. And this function will be uh, world colon move. And it takes in a table, um, much like the add function. Um, in our case, it'd be player. And then it takes a, the future x position and future y position of the table you're inputting. So this is the full statement. Um, uh, world move returns four variables, which is len calls uh, next y next x, and basically len is the length of this calls table. Um, basically, if you have a table and say it has uh, four four elements inside that table, the length of the table that will say well hang on uh, t equals and then um, print, you know, if we were to print the length of the table, it'd be four. And so len is the length of the coals table. And coals is a table containing all um, of the objects we are colliding with. Um, you can go to the GitHub page, it has more information about what um, each collision object, what, what kind of data each collision object contains. But all you need to know for now is that um, coals is the table containing all of our collision objects basically that we're colliding with. Um, and so basically in the end, we want player.x to equal next x and player.y equal the next y. Um, there is some stuff we will need to do before this, but for now, this, this will work um, uh, if we add another uh, collision object. So let's, let's remove this code. Um, uh, right here, because this doesn't calculate anything uh, using our library. Um, so now we just have uh, move, apply gravity, and collide inside of our update function. And then inside collide, we have all um, the code pertaining to using the library uh, for collision update. And so if you run this right now, there won't be anything exciting. We'll still fall down. Um, so let, let's let's get something that we could collide with. Um, uh, and so local block, um, basically I can't use this this variable outside of this main.lua. And so we're going to give this block table x, uh, x variable, a y variable, a width variable, say 32. Um, actually, something like uh, 300. And the height can be something like 32. Um, that sounds pretty good. And we'll do the same exact world add function, except instead of doing the player, we are going to do the block. And so now we've added the block to the world. Uh, because our block is going to be a static object, it's not going to be moving or applied by gravity. It's basically going to act as like the ground uh, for our platformer. We don't need to run any update code on it because the thing we want to... So basically, if you have moving collision objects, then you will use this world move uh, function. But for objects that are just staying in place, you don't need to. Um, so yeah, so if you run this right... Or actually, 
let's let's add another statement saying uh, let's draw the rectangle. Um, I'll do it as a line. I'll pass in block dot x, block dot y, block dot width, block dot height, and let's run it. Oh, okay. That's not really where where we can collide with anything. Um, let's say y position of 500 and x position of, I don't know, let's say 50. Uh, now we should be able to fall on it without, oh, we'll move a little bit. But yay, as you can see, we can fall down and now we can walk on this object. Um, one thing to note though, that we'll add in a second is that if you walk off the side, you'll fall down faster than you'd normally think you should. So if you, um, that may not look that fast, but um, let me move this and uh, I'm going to move this block over so we basically fall onto it. It's a little bit aggravating that we have to move um, within my 120. Uh, okay, there we go. So now we can fall onto the block without having to move our character. Um, and if we increase the gravity and increase the velocity, the terminal velocity, you will see what I mean. Um, that you'd fall off the side normally than you, you think you would. So there you go. I just walked off the side, but I, I fell down almost instantaneously fast. And that's not normal um, in physics. Like you, if you jump off the side of something, usually, um, or I mean, if you walk off the side of something, your initial y velocity should be zero. But in our case, the initial y velocity is terminal velocity. Why is this the case? Because we haven't added any code yet saying, hey, if we're colliding with a collision object, set on like the top or bottom, set the y velocity to zero. So we need to do that. Um, and so we will be taking advantage of our uh, len and um, Cole's table that we've that have been returned by the world move function. And so, again, all this local keyword means is that, um, well, let me write this whole statement out. Um, so, okay, I guess I should explain what col is. Col is a table, and col contains um, various information that we want to know, that we want to know about the objects we're colliding with. So say, um, Obviously, the, the various uh, variables um, that the table could contain. In our case, we all we're colliding with is block. So all it has is the x, the y, the width and height variable. Um, we can get those by doing something like print um, col.other.x. Um, it also contains information about what side we're touching. Um, which is very important to know when creating a platform. Um, and again, the local keyword only means that inside this for loop, I can access this cold variable or this cold variable. Um, that's all that it means. And so now we have this statement, we can actually um, do some conditionals uh, with this coal. And so um, coal contains another table. I know it might get a little bit confusing, but Cole contains another table that we can um, access, and it's called normal. And this normal table is basically, um, it's basically uh, the table containing the information about what side we're touching. And so, basically, what what this statement is saying is if uh, we're if cold dot normal dot y equals negative one, what this is saying is that are we touching the top side of the collision object. So um, if we if we go back and run this, this would be the top side. Right now this would be normal dot one dot y would equal negative one. And if I were um, jumping underneath this platform and hitting the bottom side, normal dot y would equal one. Um, it also has a um, as you might have guessed, a normal dot x and cold.normal.x equals negative one um, if we're touching the left side, and it equals positive one if we're touching the right side. Um, and then it will, it will equal zero if we're not touching either side. Uh, likewise for the top and bottom. 
So now that we know what side we're touching, the top or bottom, this is what this statement is saying. Are we touching the top or are we touching the bottom? Then we want to set our y velocity variable to zero. So now, if we uh, if we try to run off the side, you can see it's much more gradual. It, it, it's very, it, it's much more graceful than the previous iteration where we just instantly fell at terminal velocity. But now we fall at zero and then, in, and then accelerate, um, which is much, much nicer and more realistic. Uh, so yeah, um, let me change the color of this. Not that it's important, but I kind of want this to be green. Um, so yeah, now you can add more uh, blocks. You can start kind of seeing how we can start messing around with our level. Um, we haven't added jumping yet, but we have functioning collision. Um, and that's it for this episode. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one where we'll be adding uh, a jump mechanic.